Hello, comrades, and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Today we will talk about retail in the Soviet Union. Now, this topic is pretty heavy, so we're probably going to make several videos uh, trying to cover different aspects of uh, retailing in USSR, and specifically in Ukraine, because I lived in Kiev, the capital of Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. So my memory is pretty much based on my experience of shopping uh, in Kiev and also uh, shopping in the Ukrainian village up north in the northern part of Ukraine. So that's what we're going to talk about. The first of all, the first thing you can think of, the only word which can kind of reflect the situation in retail in Soviet Union is the word deficit, the deficit. Uh, what that means is just the items that you cannot just go and buy, uh, items which is always in short supply. Uh, so that was like this thing, if you can get some deficit, that means you bought something that you really needed or wanted, and you finally managed to get it. So the funny thing and when the customer is buying things is actually, it was more about getting it, the So the word was using, yeah, I got this, or we're having a birthday party, so I need to get this, that, and that. It doesn't mean, so that means you just don't go to the store and you just buy what you need. You need to talk to people like, you know, that your neighbor in the same apartment building, she works at this grocery store, so maybe she can get, get you a couple of cans of sprouts, then maybe there's some specific bottle of wine, so you might need to find out somebody who, so it wasn't just as you go and buy stuff. Unfortunately, of course, I won't say that shells were totally sparse and nothing was there, but uh, you need to keep in mind that in the Soviet planned economy, there were different levels of supplying goods depending on the cities. So, for example, Moscow as a capital of Soviet Union was level number one. So its stores were had the most amount of goods. So Moscow was number one priority to fill the stores full because that's the capital, that's the display of the country. And it, it created this interesting things called the sausage trains. So the people from other towns around Moscow and as far as like maybe several hundred kilometers, miles away from Moscow, people will take a train trips to Moscow to buy groceries, to buy sausages and other items that they couldn't get home. And of course that would make uh, Moscowites upset because the stores will be crowded, there'll be big lines and all those people will be out of town people, people who came on the sausage trains to load up and take the goodies back to their homes. So even in Moscow they had to introduce so-called uh, talon system, which is you get a piece of paper, it's like a permission to buy a specific item, and without that piece of paper, that talon, you're not allowed to purchase. So they try to limit uh, washing off the goods out of Moscow. And of course, the grocery stores in outskirts of Moscow, which was not easy to get because, you know, all the train stations right in the center of, of, the, of the capital, and those stores had more goods than stores right downtown because that's where the people from sausage trains shopped. Now, my city, Kiev, as well as Leningrad and the capitals of other republics like Minsk, the capital of Belarusian Soviet Social Republic, and other uh, places, they were like level two. So we didn't have as much as Moscow, but we still had quite a bit of things. So, of course, we had our local sausage trains, but not as bad as the ones going from Moscow, because Moscow had the most goods out of all country. Um, several items were always available. I don't remember ever having a shortage of matches. We always had matches for sale. They, they were coming from Belarus, from Gomel, and it was always price of one copy per, per match box. I already made the video about different price points. Like, what can you buy for one copec, two copex, three copex? So if you're curious, uh, scroll down on my playlist and you can watch those videos. Uh, bread, we usually didn't have a problem with uh, purchasing bread. 
but I won't say stayed there all the time. You know, bread arrives from the bakery, still fresh and hot. It was never packaged in plastic or nothing. It was never sliced. Uh, so people just buy it and it's gone. Then, you know, they bring a the new delivery. Uh, I think usually that grocery store that I had close to my uh, place, I think they were bringing different kinds of breads like twice a day. And it was really convenient for us because we lived on the second floor. So we could oversee the back of the grocery store so we could see when the truck arrives from the, uh, and then we will, uh, my mom sends me to purchase bread because we see that it just arrived so we can snatch it before it's gone. But to be in retail, um, the people had to learn the skill to make stores look full, you know, like shelves are full, even if you had really a limited amount of goods. So there's a lot of photos of uh, Soviet grocery stores. And if you look at the photos, like these ones right here, it looks like store is full, got a lot of items. But if you pay close attention, it's the same cans, just set up pretty in the different shapes. So that could be maybe a full shelf filled with uh, three liter jars of tomato juice or some kind of uh, sprouts in tomato sauce and all kind of things. So that was a big skill of uh, people who work at that store to make different cool looking shapes out of the same cans because there was not really a lot of other items for sale. So they'll just use what they have to fill the shelves to make it look like they're full and we got abundance of things. Another thing I remember about uh, grocery stores in Kiev, for example, and not just grocery stores, regular retail stores, we had a lot of really specialized uh, stores. For example, we had small stores that will have a the name on it, it's called Chleb, which means bread, and all they sell just um, different kinds of breads, you know, sweets, different sweet type of bread, regular bread, um, for example, Ukrainsky and other kinds. It's all they would sell and just bread. So you buy bread there and nothing else. And you need to remember that bread was one of the items was heavily subsidized by government. So it was ridiculously cheap. For example, the big loaf of like Ukrainsky bread would be like 16 kopecks or 12 kopecks. There was this small little um, white bread things at the uh, bulachki that it was like three kopecks. But because bread was so cheap, uh, people out in the country will try to buy it just to feed to the pigs because it was making sense to buy bread and feed it to chickens and pigs because it was so cheap. So, for example, out in the country, there was always limits how much bread you can buy. Uh, course because it's a small village everyone knows how many people lives in the household so there'll be a limit for example one piece of bread um, like one item of bread per person so if you have for example uh, relatives came to stay for the vacation so then you say okay we have grandma and grandpa two people and four visitors so you have a total of six people so you're allowed to buy uh, six pieces of bread so they had limits. Uh, we also had uh, stores that sold only milk products and there'll be a label, you know, the sign on the store says Malako, which means milk, or sometimes we'll say Malochne Produkte, milk products. And all they sell will be milk, uh, kefir, uh, sour cream and cheeses, uh, cottage cheese, or we call it tvarog, and nothing else. So it'd be just the milk products. And those usually were opening like early, maybe 6 a.m. Uh, most other stores will be open 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. So they'll have a fresh delivery. And milk uh, back in 80s was sold in this funny looking triangle packages like this and also in the glass bottles. Uh, the other items like uh, cottage cheese, 
uh, some kind of cheese was prepackaged, but I remember most of the items like cheeses and even sour cream, uh, you have to tell um, the uh, sale person how much stuff they want. For example, you say, I want 300 grams of cheese. So she will slice this, uh, you know, she has a big wheel of cheese and she will slice your wedge, weight it up, put on the scale, she will weight it, check the weight and that's what you buy. And even sour cream, smetana, will arrive in this big bidon, it is aluminum, um, like a little barrels. And she'll have this long spoon that she dips in there and then you bring your own jar and she fills the, the jar with um, the sour cream. So that's kind of interesting. There was nothing, mostly, any, nothing was prepackaged. You buy it, like they will cut it for you right there. And of course, we hardly had any preservatives in those items because when you have a shortage of almost everything or short supply, it's constantly being bought. So you don't worry about shelf life because things don't stay on shelves for too long. We also had uh, stores that called riba, fish, or sometimes there'll be ribne productive fish products. And there was a popular like generic name called Dari Moria, so the gifts of the sea. And that's where you're supposed to find items coming from the water. Well, fish, of course, we never had anything else except fish. Now, one of the most easy to buy fish was carp. There were quite a few uh, farms around Kiev, at least, that grew carp. And that's the fish that you could buy. Then, of course, you can buy different uh, canned fish. But there was also not a huge selection, of course. And a lot of fish would be frozen. and uh, Or like smoked fish, silotka, or pickled fish uh, out of barrels. And uh, so that will be uh, Rybne Produkty uh, fish stores. Once in a while, uh, there will be a truck with a tank on the back arriving from directly from that uh, aqua farm. And they will have fish right in the tank. And so they'll just park it anywhere. And there'll be a lady with the scales. And they'll, of course, people will line up right away and that way they will sell a live fish. So usually in the in the store there'll be fish will be already dead, you know, on ice or frozen. They'll bring live fish right directly from the farm in their own truck. And that was a really popular way to buy fish. So people get in line really quick. And then they just catch a fish out of tank and they wait it, charge you whatever it cost. Of course there was no checks, no credit cards, just cash. And you take that fish, which is still alive, uh, back home. And I remember every time if my mom uh, gets some little fish, she let me keep it. So I'll fill the uh, bathtub with water and I'll keep that fish for a couple of days if it's a small size. So yeah, carp was a really popular fish. Of course, I found out that here uh, it really doesn't consider to be a good eating fish. But back home, we ate a lot of carp. It was even part of this uh, funny cartoon, Nupagadi, about the, this fish uh, tank truck. And there was always uh, stores called Miasa, uh, which means meat products. Meat is Miasa. I'll be say, usually it just says Miasa, it wouldn't say meat products. And that's where you s purchase um, different sausages, kalbasas, and fresh meat. And we had a quite a few issues with that, of course. That was one of the shortages, like to get a nice salami. Salami was one of the deficits. You couldn't just go and buy salami. That was really popular, was sold out right away. Uh, another thing was the beef. That's kind of funny because my wife really upset with me because I don't like steaks. I prefer processed meat over steaks, and that sounds so ridiculous to her. But back in the home in Soviet Union, they didn't raise beef uh, beef cattle. The only way you get beef is when the milk cow gets too old, then it gets slaughtered, and that's how you get beef. So that meat was always chewy and hard, 
So never ever in my life I actually experienced eating like beef the way you guys have it here in America. Our beef was always old and really hard. So since childhood I always preferred processed meats like kalbasas and sausages. And of course, as I said, because of the shortage of that, one of the, if you work as the person that chops meat, right, um, well, call it mesnik, those guys were, it was considered a really good job because everyone wants the best cut of meat. So you're in charge of that meat. So everyone wants to be your friend and then you can change, you know, I'll get you a nice cut of meat if you can me you know, some good fish or something else for eating. So that was a good job to have to be here. Mesnik, and I'm trying to remember the word in English, but I can't recall, but that's the guy who, you know, cuts meat right there at the grocery store, at the meat store. So this is my initial short overview. We'll go uh, more into details in the next video, talking about different other stores. But I just want to tell you a joke that we used to have and it reflects how bad situation it was with uh, things in the store. So there's a two stores across from each other, across the street. One is the fish store, Riba. And across is the Masa store, so the meat products. So a guy walks into the uh, fish product store and you know, there's a bored lady sitting there. She has like, hardly anything on the shelves. So he asked her, excuse me, do you have any meat for sale? And she looks at him and says, did you pay attention what says on the banner, you know, on the sign outside? This store doesn't have any fish for sale. Store across the street, that's the store that doesn't have any meat for sale. So that's kind of our black humor about how much items uh, people had for sale in their stores so we don't sell we don't have any fish to sell because we call it the fish store those guys don't have any meat for sale because they call meat store so i hope you enjoyed this video as always uh, don't forget to put likes and share with your friends and we'll see you shortly to continue our conversation about retail in the soviet union